Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Um, my name is Philip Ivanov and I'm the CEO of Asia Society Australia. Uh, welcome to Connecting Australian and Indonesian Business, which is a product of collaboration between Asia Society and Telstra, which will examine the opportunities and complexity of Australia's business relationship with Indonesia and celebrate a milestone in our economic partnership, which is the launch of Telcom Telstra, Telstra's joint venture with Telcom Indonesia. Today's event is a centerpiece of Asia Society's strategic focus on the bilateral relationship with Indonesia, and we are very proud to present it today with one of Australia's leading companies and also the one who is most active in Indonesia and in the broader region. Um, our stunning venue today, our discussion, um, the multimedia content that we've put together, the music by a great Jakarta band, White Shoes and the Couples Company, uh, will aim to underline the dynamism of Indonesia and the potential for closer uh, and more diverse connections between our countries. We'll start our program with a couple of videos set in the context for our main part of the event, which is a panel discussion. We'll continue um, with a vote of thanks from the Asia Society Chairman and the launch of our new publication that you all have and we'll finish with a cocktail reception. Um, I want to thank you all for coming, particularly our guests from Indonesia, Asia Society Australia members, uh, board directors and advisory councils, Telstra colleagues, members of Australia Indonesia Business Council and Youth Association, and Indonesian students studying in Sydney. A warm welcome to you all. We'll start today with the highlights video from the launch of Telstra's joint venture with Telcom Indonesia, which happened on May 13th this year. And now I would like to invite um, David Burns, Group Managing Director for Global Services at Telstra, to welcome you on behalf of our host today. David is one of the commissioners of Telcom Telstra. He has an impressive career of over 23 years in the information and telecommunications sector, having held a variety of strategic roles in Australia and New Zealand, the Asia-Pacific region, North America, and the UK before joining Telstra in 2012. Now, David's current role is Group Managing Director of the Division of Telstra Global Enterprise and Services, responsible for design and building and management, managing an integrated services capability for Telstra's business, enterprise, and government customers. David Burns. Thank you. Welcome and salam at tatang. Welcome to our facility. Welcome on behalf of Telstra. Welcome on behalf of Telcom Telstra. And welcome on behalf of Telcom Indonesia. Uh, my primary job is to welcome you. You may notice a common shirt here. This is a Board of Commissioner shirt, which I'm a very proud member of, of the Telcom Telstra joint venture. I would like to take great acknowledgement of our partner and uh, members of our partners who are here. There are a number of individuals from Telcom Telstra who have joined us here this evening. And in particular, I'd like to uh, um, take note of Pa Awal. Thank you for joining us. Uh, pa Jody, who is up in the middle there, and Pa Semley, um, who is also here this evening, uh, noted guests of uh, Telcom Telstra. In fact, it's uh, those of you who are Sydney siders or visiting at this particular point in time would know there's a festival on here called the Vivid Festival with all the lighting in and around the harbours. You may have seen it. Uh, by sheer coincidence, it was two years ago, almost this week, which Pa Awal and a small group of people from Telcom Indonesia came to visit us here at Telstra and to initiate this journey that we've been on for two years now. This partnership that we formed, we agreed to that partnership six months ago in signing of contractual documents and partnership documents. And for six months, it's been incredibly hard work, heavy lifting, but very, very rewarding lifting. And we got to the point where you've just seen a video of nearly two weeks ago, a very proud moment, where we launched this entity called Telcom Telstra in the Indonesian marketplace. And this is our opportunity to do that uh, with our colleagues from um, the Indonesian Society and here in Australia and, and, and you, our partners, people who are interested in the Indonesian and Asian market, and we're very proud to have this event here tonight 
at the Telstra facility. So very brief, very warm welcome to you. I hope you enjoy the conversation. We've got some great uh, panellists here to initiate some good discussion and I look forward to chatting with you after the event with perhaps a drink and a canopy. Thank you again for joining us. Welcome everybody um, this evening. Um, the bilateral relationship with Indonesia is immensely important and indeed challenging for Australia. Many would say it's the most important relationship we have. Now from many angles of course people have already noted that Indonesia is on a remarkable trajectory within the next few decades to become the fifth largest economy in the world, already with a consuming class of 45 million scheduled to grow to 145 million. Brendan, you've, uh, you've participated in looking at business affairs globally in many different markets. Mm -hmm. So for Telstra, what marks out Indonesia at this point in time? It was very interesting when we started the conversations you know, with, uh, with Telcom because we started it focused on enterprise customers, so our large customer set. And in Australia, we have about 1,200 you know, large customers. And you sit down and you talk with, uh, with Pa and the team at Telcom, and they have about the same 1,200 customers. And you think, hmm, for such a populous country, that, that was a little bit surprising. But then you ask Telcom how many SMB customers they have, and they tell you it's 50 million. And so you start to think to yourself, well, most developing economies eventually move to become more of a services-based economy. I think these days, if you're going to be an effective service-based economy, you need the technology infrastructure, unlike perhaps roads and airports and, you know, water and a whole bunch of other things which India is, uh, Indonesia is working on. Actually, on technology infrastructure, they have a very, very significant fibre rollout from the country, which has been driven by Telcom. And so there is, I think, a base there under which we can start to build and create that technology infrastructure layer which can underpin the shift of services and really drive you know, uh, small business and, and enterprise. I think the other corollary is just the age of the nation. It's such a young nation. Uh, I know a statistic, and maybe someone in the audience can correct me with the official statistic, but the number that sticks in my head is at the last election, 23% of voters voted for the first time. Um, so that sort of says a statement about how young the country is. And... Again, another a report I saw said that mobile telecommunications has just overtaken cosmetics as the number one sub-industry in the country. So all of that for somebody that works at Telstra and has probably been in tech most of their life and worked around the world says, I think it has a pretty exciting future in, uh, you know, in, in all of those dimensions. Indonesia looks north to Korea, to Japan, to Singapore, Malaysia. It doesn't look south. We as a business community are missing probably, I think, one of the best opportunities that's emerging in, uh, in, in Asia, if not the globe, and it's at our doorstep. With the right selections of partner, you can do business very successfully in Indonesia. And I, I feel Australian business is missing a massive opportunity. And if we're not there, when the, when the real growth starts to kick in, then others will have eaten our lunch. And that will be a shame for, uh, for, the, for businesses of Australia. So I feel quite passionate that Australia business needs to get over there, start working with Indonesian companies. This is a great company. The barriers are not that hard. There are always, but, you know, the barriers in China, India, take your pick, are no worse. Probably the challenge was as you look to translate uh, the intent into the words and the structures. And uh, Pa Indra, who's not here but was on the video, who was sort of my, uh, my executive colleague that I faced off with at Telecom with the team, would always talk about the spirit and the words. <laughs> An Indonesian guy uh, said to me, uh, with a great piece of advice, is Indonesia is relationship before rights. You must build relationships 
and before you can claim rights. I think the lens, we, you need to, we need to tone down our Western lens to be successful in doing business with Indonesia. And that's a learning and it takes some time and uh, trying to um, uh, you know, have those legal conversations really can be you know, it, very quite frustrating because you'll do something you think you agreed but you're not and you'll go around and do it again because we didn't actually stop to have the conversation. Is there, is there anything else that uh, the, Australian business is missing? Look, the other thing that we're also focused on is creating an Indonesian business. Now, that may sound like a slight anathema given, you know, we're Telstra, but we're forming a joint venture. So uh, it's uh, about 48 people today. I absolutely, absolutely support that in that um, one of the things that I think, uh, and no offence to my, my telecom uh, colleagues, is they thought we were going to bring a piece of Australia and stick it in Indonesia. Bad plan. We're creating an Indonesian company. Now, admittedly, we're using Telstra technology, Telstra processes, Telstra skills to do that, but it's an Indonesian company in Indonesia, run by Indonesians. Now I think we're on the cusp of a time as Indonesian economy is modernising and uh, rapidly, and we're seeing the growth in demand for this kind of uh, more high-value-added services, that this is the time when a lot of the the foundation base that we have, and, and there's tremendous knowledge of Indonesia in this country, perhaps more knowledge of Indonesia in Australia than any other, certainly Western country or perhaps any other country. So we have a lot of a foundation that we can build on as Indonesia modernises to go into some of these higher value added service uh, exports and industries, and this is the time when we really need to begin to capitalise on the assets we have. A lot of universities are very visible, but I, I just think there's a lot more we can do. And that's those services like, uh, like telco services, like uh, education services, they're the sweet spots for us where we can work together rather than compete. Because to your point, in the mining industry, you know, you know perhaps we, we slug it out as competitors, but in the services portfolio, I see a really strong opportunity. I think uh, Joko Widodo said that there was a need for more than $500 billion worth of infrastructure development over the next uh, five years in Indonesia. And as you've said, uh, roads, rail, ports. And uh, this sort of infrastructure is absolutely vital if uh, Indonesia is to become itself more competitive um, and, um, and to, you know, to make the most of its economic growth potential. He, he wants Indonesia, I think, to grow at 7% per annum over the next five years, and to achieve that growth, uh, some of these infrastructure bottlenecks will uh, need to be um, removed. And, I mean, this has long been and is increasingly one of the things that we do in the Australian government through our aid program. One of the things that um, is really important about taking advantage of the value of proximity which Australia has to Indonesia, which we haven't talked about, but is very apparent to all of us, particularly in a dramatically changing economic situation in Indonesia uh, that uh, colleagues have already mentioned, movement into a services foci, requiring a technological platform of excellence, and Telstra is certainly doing that. But one of the things that we do know we do have to deal with is a deeper engagement. Um, uh, I think it's good policy anywhere in Asia and indeed the world for companies to be uh, nationalising their workforce and uh, uh, but that requires a deeper appreciation of those that are running businesses of the need to do that and about the cultural differences that you're going to deal with and doing that on a sustained basis. It's part of internal training, it's part of broader community uh, uh, understanding. You know, if you cast your mind back um, maybe 15, 20 years, Bahasa Indonesia was quite prevalent uh, as a language in our schools. Uh, not necessarily the case anymore. Um, there, there's a huge collection of uh, Indonesian cultural artefacts in many of our uh, art galleries and uh, museums. Um, so we're not without our capacity to understand, but we have to recognise, particularly policymakers and leaders of companies, that engagement requires a deeper dive into those things and a greater understanding. As a nation to nation, we, have, we don't have a deep a deep and abiding engagement. In more recent years, it's been far better than it ever has been in the past. But those, those levels of engagement from state governments and national governments 
into Indonesia, I think are an essential ingredient. Well, thank you very much. Um, uh, firstly, thank you, uh, everybody, uh, for being here this evening. Uh, we, we do appreciate it. Firstly, can I say thank you to uh, Telstra, uh, to my colleagues from Telstra. Um, uh, you've done a great job in uh, entering in the global partnership, and we do thank you for that. And uh, this is the uh, fir first event that we've done uh, together, and we certainly thank you uh, very, very much. And to David Burns and uh, Brendan uh, particularly, and to Phil uh, particularly, thank you for the support that you've given, and also from your insights team, some of whom are here today. Uh, can I also thank our other panellists, uh, Alistair uh, Cox and uh, uh, Bruce uh, Gosper. Uh, Bruce, for being moderator and uh, for a very succinct uh, summing up. Uh, the only profession that I heard that wasn't on your list was lawyers. I know, <laughs> I, I know it's just an oversight. <laughs> um, but uh, thank you very, very much. Um, I think many of us uh, uh, in this short session have learned a great deal about what is happening. Alistair, you're hugely experienced and hugely knowledgeable and having served in Indonesia, you have seen the dramatic change in what is taking place now. And so I think, colleagues, we can take comfort that uh, these two uh, gentlemen are pivotal players in the developing policy uh, for our nation in Indonesia. And so we thank you both for uh, joining us. So please could you thank the panellists for their good work. Thank you. Uh, we're delighted tonight to bring some focus uh, on Indonesia. There are uh, many opportunities, um, uh, uh, and, and the future, I think, uh, is going to be extremely positive, um, and there's uh, something for everyone in the Indonesian relationship, both for Indonesia with Australia and Australia with Indonesia, and indeed it's about improving our neighbourhood um, and looking for peaceful ways in which we can bring sustained growth and success to our relevant communities, and there is every reason for us to be partnering in many, many different ways. We wanted to also tonight uh, to uh, draw attention to uh, uh, connecting Australia and Indonesia, uh, which uh, we are officially launching tonight. Um, connecting Australia with Indonesia has two key articles in it, one by Richard Woolcott and one by Andrew Parker from PwC. Richard, you will know, has been and probably is the most senior diplomat uh, in Australia's recent history, having served in a multiple range of areas, but also importantly in Indonesia and went on to be head of the Department of Foreign Affairs uh, and also was in the United Nations and also was the one who took uh, Australia uh, early on uh, to the Security Council and was pivotal in our more recent again joining the Security Council. He has written an article here, Deep Insights, Deep Insights, which I hope that you will take the opportunity to read because it's about our strategic positioning that becomes extremely important for us to be able to enter into those markets and for us to deepen that relationship. For Andrew, who recently uh, had a major report done on investment uh, in the region and also in Indonesia from PwC, who has worked extensively throughout Asia, he has also penned an article for us and that will give you a business perspective because we believe in the Asia society that to bring those two elements together together with culture is part of the overall mosaic of developing a very, very positive and successful engagement strategy. So I have pleasure in presenting this to you colleagues tonight, thank our two authors and hope that you will take it away and disseminate it amongst your organisations to start that deeper engagement and understanding which we believe is so vital to this very important relationship. We also um, wanted to say to uh, uh, our, our many other colleagues that couldn't be here today that uh, we are going to be putting this uh, uh, panel discussion on our uh, global web. We'll be circulating this onto our global web. We are going to use the technology of the times to take our messages, not just to Australia, but to the world. And can I say, I'll give you one guess who we're going to go to to get help to do this. <laughs> Our global partners. <laughs> so with those few words, uh, can I say thank you to everyone for being here. Can I say thank you to the team of the Asia Society. We only actually have two people. We have Philip Ivanoff as the CEO and Fiona Wallace-Smith as our Chief Operations. We rely on the support of our many members, supporters and advisory council members here today to be effective players but to be meaningful players. Tonight, I believe, was a meaningful contribution this very important debate. So to Philip and Fiona and team, thank you very, very much. Thank you all for being here. Please now I invite you to come and enjoy Telstra's hospitality. Thank you very much.